Hey pen friends, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to my cozy corner of the internet. Today's video is going to be a fun one. It is the first flip through of 2024, first completed notebook. I recently finished archiving my latest daily journal and I thought it would be cool for us to flip through the completed notebook so you could see all the pages, all the journaling, all the all the ephemera and all that good stuff. And yeah, I thought I would talk a bit about how I put this notebook together and how my memory slash daily journals currently look right now. So a couple of you who've been around for a while probably already know what this is, but this is my daily journal. The left is actually the archive binder that I've been deciding to keep my daily journals in as I complete them, but this notebook right here is actually what houses my daily journal as I'm using them. And this is my passport traveler's notebook. This one is in the camel color. I, I got this really beautiful Starbucks roastery charm for Christmas, which I've swapped out and put on the front. Short backstory about me, I actually, my first job ever was a barista at Starbucks. So even though I actually don't drink coffee anymore, I drink tea, I have a very close place in my heart for Starbucks because I did work there for so long. So getting this Starbucks reserve charm was really, really special. So it's very cool to have this hanging out on my notebook and I really, really like it. But this passport bullet journal is what I'm using right now as my daily journal. And I've been using this as a daily journal since mid October of last year. So I'll just open it up in case you haven't seen the setup. It's not very different from the last time I showed you. I just have a little zip case in the front here with a card for decoration. I have a wallet. This is by To and Fro in collaboration with Traveler's Company. And then I have my daily journal. This is a grid insert by Traveler's Company. So it just looks like this when the pages aren't filled out. Normally this would come with a cover on it, a like green <laughs> cardstock cover. I accidentally left my journal on the couch and my dog started to eat the cover. So that is why I removed it. But it also kind of inspired me a little bit. I thought it was kind of nice to see the notebook without a cover. So I decided in that moment to also archive my notebooks without a cover. So you will not see a cover on my completed book either, but yeah, normally these covers would come with a green cardstock cover over top, but it's not on this one for the reasons I just listed out. And uh, how I use this journal and what you'll kind of see in the completed one, this is my journal that I started at the end of last year. And uh, essentially what I do is I have one page per day. So every day that I decide to journal, I'll sit down, I write the date at the top, and then I will write about my day underneath. When I finish writing about the day, I leave it all on the page. I try to contain my entries to one page just because I want them to be short enough that I will go back and reread them because I kind of have a short attention span. <laughs> so I find anything longer than a page, I just will not read. And uh, as the days go, I'll just turn the page and add the next day. I don't journal about every day, which you'll see in the book as I flip through it. I try to, but I mainly just focus on adding entries on days that I wanna remember, something interesting happened, or I just kinda of wanna write down the events that happened. But as you can see, this is kind of the layout. It's very simple, pen only, nothing fancy, as, as it usually is with my journals. I like to keep things very simple. And uh, my kind of process that I took for my journals this year and in my completed book is I will focus in the current journal on writing about my day. So you can kind of see the different daily entries. So I'll kind of continue doing that until I finish the book. And then once I finish the book, that's where I will take this out. I will put in a new book in my traveler's notebook so I can cart so I can start journaling about the next series of days. And then I will put 
my completed book in this archive binder and I will add all the photos, tickets, pieces of paper, all that good stuff that I've collected during the time period that the journal spans. And that is what you will see here in this completed journal. So this is just like the first book. It's a grid traveler's notebook. And this book started on the 21st of October and it goes until the 26th of December because that's when I ran out of pages. So pretty much the last quarter of 2023. And because I'm kind of lazy, I just got around to archiving and adding all the photos now. So <laughs> that is why I'm showing it to you in February of 2024. One thing I'll also add before I start the flip through that you might find helpful if you're thinking of journaling in this way or just curious about my process and how I kind of did this and how I kept track of all my photos is I did use this Starbucks notebook. This has little folders on each page. It's really cool. I really like it. I wish it was part of their standard line because I think it's really, really helpful. Um, but what I did was as I journaled about the days and collected ephemera, since I wasn't putting it in the notebook as I journaled, I would actually put it in these little kind of clear envelopes like this to keep it together and in order so that when I went back to fill up my journal when I archived it, I could just kind of pull this out, flip through each one and then kind of match the event with the photo or the ticket or any of the other stuff I collected. And I found that worked really, really well. I like kind of collecting the ephemera on the side instead of putting it in the notebook as I go because as you add photos, especially bulky photos such as the Instax photos, which I use, it makes it much more difficult to write in the notebook. So. What I found was a good solution to that since I love the look and the feel of Instax photos is I just added them after I completed the book so I could still have them in the archive but it wasn't making it difficult to journal in the moment and I wouldn't like, you know, stop journaling because it was too hard to write. So that's what I did. And I think I'll just flip through the completed journal so you can see how it looks. I really, really like how it turned out. I'm really excited to fill up this binder with more memories as the year progresses. I really like how these books only last a couple months too because let me tell you, the sense of accomplishment I felt when I finished this book was like <laughs> ridiculous. I was so proud of myself. I, it was just like so cool. I think a lot of times it's really hard to finish a notebook, especially because Notebooks can have hundreds of pages. Traveler's Notebook only has 64, so it's a little more manageable, but it just was so cool to finish the book and have completed it and to be able to put it in the archive and add the photos and read back on the entries as I added the photos. It was just so cool. So definitely a great system if you like kind of little dopamine rushes that motivate you to continue journaling, 10 out of 10 recommend, but I think I've done enough talking on the system and how I do it. Let me just show you how the completed journal looks because I'm sure that's why you're actually, actually here. <laughs> so here is the beginning of the book. I added a couple extra pieces of ephemera that I had on the inside cover here because I wanted to keep them in the book. But normally what I kind of did for all these pages, which you can see on the right, is for any page that had an entry with a piece of ephemera, so like a ticket, a photo, I think I have like a clue, like leaflet from the board game, like anything, anything paper-based really, <laughs> I would paper clip it in just with some paper clips from like an office supply store. I have this like personal hesitation slash it makes me really nervous to actually like glue ephemera into the book. I don't know, it, it freaks me out. I prefer to use paper clips. I think it's kind of cool and I like how it allows you to take out the photo and look at it. I think it makes for a better experience when you're sharing your book as well because then people can kind of take out the photo, take a look, all that stuff. So that's kind of the approach I took here. And then I also added tabs to the notebook to separate by month so that I could 
just have a little bit of structure in the book and kind of see on a high level what months of the year the notebook went over. So this book started on October 21st. I have an Instax photo here. This is the regular one. I also have the square Instax photos in here, both of which have been printed using my Instax printers, which I like because then I can just take photos with my phone and print them out. Obviously not every day has something to attach to it. Some of the days are shorter entries than others. I try to keep my entries to a page, but I also don't hesitate uh, not writing a lot if I don't feel like it. It's more just kind of capturing the details I want. Not all the details are like super <laughs> crazy either. Literally on this day, I wrote about how I finished uh, some main quests in a video game, Pokemon Scarlet, and uh, I beat the Elite Four. <laughs> so just kind of things that I find cool to look back on. Not all of them are like, you know, I won this award, I climbed a mountain, I swam through the creek. <laughs> not, not everything is as monumental as that. Oh, this is one of the square photos. I got the square Instax recently and oh, I love it so much. It's so cool. This is a photo of the fall leaves when I went on a hike with my friend. Now it's winter, so there are no leaves, but you know, memories. <laughs> oh, this is, um, I played Clue with a few people and it was, surprisingly harder than I remember because I think as a kid I cheated and I didn't play the game correctly but I just um I just kept the little like leaflet that I filled out and I put it in my journal some of the main things that I try to collect to put in my books include photos receipts those are kind of like the main two but if I get like any sort of business card or leaflet I will also try to keep that and I will I'll archive them in my my little window folder. Oh, this day I had a bunch of ephemera. I'll take it out for you. I had a, I have two photos here. I'm not gonna show you the second one because it has a photo of someone in my family, but I have two photos here and a receipt. I could have probably arranged them, you know, in a fancy way, but I just thought like putting the paper clip and letting them be worked as well. And I kind of like the more carefree, simple, messy, if you want to call it. I don't think this is really messy, but just kind of putting the memories there and not really arranging it in any sort of way, but I can still look at them. So I kind of liked how that turned out. I have some sticky notes from some journaling I did on journals. Some days I just didn't have ephemera to add, especially in November. <laughs> Some more photos, a receipt. Oh, this is cool. This is, so, more photos. So I, I took more photos here. This was when I went ice skating. So I took a photo of the Zamboni and then the skates, put it in, and I added it here. And then I also went to a bagel place. So that is where this came from. And then I also kept, I think this is from the actual bagel, like the, the bag the bagels come in. So I kept that as well and just added it. And it was kind of big, so I just folded it over the photos. And I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. And the last page of the notebook is Tuesday, December 26th. And it actually worked out really well because I, the next day, went on a plane to go on a trip over Christmas and New Year's. So it worked out well because this book finishes right before my trip and the New Year. So it's kind of a nice 
natural place to end the book. And that is how the book looks. Very simple, but I really liked how I was able to very uh, consistently journal about most of the days throughout the last couple months. It's really easy. You're just sitting down for five to 10 minutes and journaling, which I really liked, especially with like work and life. Sometimes things can get busy and I found it was, you know, not too hard to catch up even if I missed a couple days, which is <laughs> very important to me. And something I wanted to kind of focus on is journaling and being able to have archive journals that I actually want to look back on and read. So it was really cool going through this journal to put in the photos. I ended up reading a lot of the entries and kind of being able to look back on the month, which was really cool. But I also just really like how this smaller format limits you and how much you can write. So it kind of forces you to just write down the stuff that you really want to look back on. So I think that's nice because then I actually do end up reading the entries because they're a bit shorter, but yeah, that is the completed journal. That's how it ended up looking. And it's kind of chunky. <laughs> so I'm wondering how many of these I'll be able to fit in here. I'm thinking three or four. I don't know if I'll be able to fit five, which is how many uh, bands we have, but we will see. I will keep you updated, but yeah, that was just a little look at how I'm journaling currently how my completed journal looked. I hope you enjoyed the flip through and uh, enjoyed seeing how my journal looked for October to December of 2023. Let me know how you have been journaling slash memory keeping, recording your daily memories, if you have a system in place that you really like. And uh, besides that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the flip through. Oh, I love a good flip through. <laughs> and uh, I will see you all in the next video. Bye everybody.